Welcome back to Bumblebee. I'm your host, Taylor McWaters. And I'm Kyle McWaters. Here's some more bizarre real events that sound totally fake. Yeah, what he said. Yeah. Yeah. Number 10, same day, different vows. Okay, we'll start off with a nice bright mood, okay? Let's do this. CBS News reported recently, Fred and Lynette Dubendorf, husband and wife, they were taking a stroll down the beach with their dog, just living the life, right? The ideal picture. When they noticed a message in a bottle washed up on the shore. I'd be so excited, first of all, but I'd also be concerned because I have seen Castaway. Could be anything in there, I don't know. This message could go one of two ways, but either way, I'm reading it, what's going on? It could be from Survivor, you know? It could be from an island. Taylor, the tribe has spoken. They opened it and inside they found wedding vows from another couple, Melody Kloska and Matt Bears. Yeah, they had recently got married on a beach on Lake Michigan and word spread rather quickly via the waterways, I guess. Thing is, their wedding date was the same as the couple who found the message. They took it as a sign that both pairs were meant to be, and they sent a surprising letter to the lost couple's address. That'd be kind of creepy though, on one hand, wouldn't it be? Hey, I found that message in a bottle. Here you go. Nice address, by the way. I love the furniture. Are you guys still together? Number nine. Run, rabbit, run. Yeah, so apparently Australia has like every animal in the world except the cute little fuzzy ones. Yeah, every stinger, wing, and venom you can imagine. But no cutesies, no. Well, they do now. In 1859, English settler Thomas Austin had been officially noted for the introduction of rabbits into Australia. Yeah, Auric Tolagus Caniculus, to be exact. Even though rabbits had already kind of been brought over in the first fleet to the land of Oz. Not much, couple here, couple there. But these rabbits, however, yeah, they started migrating across Australia and destroyed around two million acres of land. Ha <laughs> pesky widow wabbits. <laughs> yeah, basically excessive overgrazing caused widespread panic, damage, and sickness through and to the vegetation. Mate, they're bloody everywhere, these little devilish kangaroos, mate. Long bloody ears out to here, mate. Fangs down to here. Terrifying little things. Not like they're small, man. Yeah, little hoppy guys. During the 19th century, the country had set up rabbit-proof fences to protect its pastoral lands. Is there even such thing as rabbit-proof fences? Finally, in the 1950s, the Australian government had had enough. Started to use biological methods to control the excessive population. Yeah, sorry, little guys. This guy's bright idea is believed to have an immense impact on the abundance of natural resources in Australia. Yeah. Thanks a lot, Thomas. Now we have no carrots, man. Number eight, legendary musical neighbors. It's weird how similar some of your neighbors are, right? Growing up, we had like three Davids on our street. They're all cops. Isn't that weird? I don't know, I just thought of that. They all loved cutting their lawn at 7 a.m. too. What a coincidence, how weird is that? Well, back in the 60s, rock icon Jimi Hendrix and the 18th century composer George Friedrich Handel, well, they were both neighbors. A couple hundred years apart, but neighbors nonetheless. They both lived in 23 Brook Street and 25 Brook Street in London. Now, had George been born, you know, 200 years later, we'd have gotten the greatest collab of all time. Would have been like, watch the throne, but times three. If you're a local, of course you'll know there's a site there now, it's a famous landmark and all that jazz. But in terms of coincidences, there's music in the air. Something's going on on Brook Street. Pick up a, an instrument or two, walk by, you know, try the harp out in that room specifically. Number seven, friendly football. I'm actually happy that this really happened and it's not just like a heartfelt Pepsi commercial that they drummed up in a meeting. Growing up, I thought this was fake due to the circumstances, but nope, this actually happened. During Christmas of 1914, a truce was held between Germany and the UK. Like these people were trying to like take each other out, but you know, Christmas is Christmas. They decorated their shelters with lights and colors, exchanged gifts at no man's land, and played a game of football between the soldiers. Yeah, isn't that nice? Soccer, of course, not football, football. They're just like dudes smashing into each other. Both Germany and the UK refused to declare an official ceasefire, but both sides declared a temporary ceasefire on their own. They gathered and celebrated tizzing the season by singing carols, wrapping up gifts for each other, drinking some drinks, laughing some laughs, and of course, a slide tackle or two. Yeah, yeah, captains, captains come to me. Yeah, it's gonna be a red card for Gunther. Yeah, back five, please, I said back five. Kick or go ahead, man. Number six, Yanni and Laurel. Okay, for our halfway point here, we have to throw in a fun recent one as well. This is kind of unbelievable, I don't know. I hope people look back on these in a thousand years, they'll be so confused what happened with Yanni and Laurel. Who were these people? Why did they talk about them so much? Remember this, Yanni, Laurel, back in 2018? I only heard Yanni for like two weeks straight, and then one day I listened and I couldn't go back. It was just Laurel all of a sudden, instead of Laurel. It went from Laurel to Laurel. 
Just like that, my life changed. I don't know what happened there. This got everybody talking. What is this phenomenon that happens? Same with the dress fiasco. Is it blue, is it white, is it gold? I don't know. What the hell is actually happening here? Well, many believe these viral illusions are proof that we're living in a simulation. Yeah, didn't expect me to say that, did ya? These arguments, no, the dress is blue, it's white, whatever. These situations prove that we perceive reality in our own way. Everybody's living their own individual perceived reality, so sometimes it always doesn't align. Sometimes I hear Yanny, then sometimes I hear Laurel. And then I lose my mind. I can't go back now. God, I hated this so much. The dress was in 2015. The Yanni Laurel thing was 2018. So I don't know. We're due for another glitch in the matrix. Will it be an auditory mix up? Will it be visual like the dress? What's next? Either way, I'm out. And I'm not on board. Also, it's blue. Number five. Cheers. Located on the banks of the River Shannon in Athlone, Ireland, there's some taps that I hope have been cleaned over the past couple of years. Like thousands of years to be exact. Sean's bar has been serving drinks for as nearly as long as people have been drinking them. Along with claiming to be the oldest pub in Ireland, Sean's bar could be the oldest operating pub on the planet. In fact, in 2004, Guinness World Records issued a certificate to Sean's Bar as the oldest official pub in Ireland. The owner of Sean's Bar says that they found coins that dated to 900 AD, as well as the wattle and daub walls, which is an ancient building technique that mixed mud, wood, and clay together. Legend has it a man named Luan Mac Luachdic started the pub as a local guide to help travelers across the Shannon. Yeah, eventually a small settlement built up around the crossing point and led eventually top to a fully constructed pub. I'm pretty sure people couldn't say the name and just went with something way easier, you know what I mean? Right, are you going over to Sean McCollin McKean Mirhano Con the Mels for a pint after the game? No. Oh, it's Sean's bar now. Oh, that's much easier. Sean's, I'll meet you, Sean's. Number four, the gym twins. Back in 1979, a set of twins were reunited. They were 39 at the time. This was of course a big moment in their lives, obviously, because for 37 years, they barely knew of each other's existence. When they finally met, yeah, the long lost twins had a bit more in common than anybody ever thought. For starters, both had been named Jim, which is amazing. I spoiled that in the fun title. But their adoptive parents both named the lads Jim. That's crazy. And both Jims loved math and carpentry. Both also had jobs in security at the time of their reconnection, and their ex-wives were both named Linda. And they'd since married a woman both named Betty. I don't know, this is kind of too parallel university for me. Imagine meeting another you, and he's like, yeah, I love surfing and IMAX movies. What are the odds? Like, how specific is this? Are you kidding? No way, that's for sure an alien. He's a scroll. He's an imposter. Get him out. Number three. The Brown Sox. The Great Molasses Flood, aka the Boston Molasses Disaster was an event that occurred January 1919 in the North End neighborhood of Boston, Massachusetts. Happy New Year, everybody. Time to get sticky. Yeah, apparently weather temperatures had risen in Boston at the time, and the mixture of cold and hot molasses together mixed, due to the thermal expansion already inside the tank, eventually burst open and collapsed. Yeah, surf's up, dude. 2.3 million gallons of molasses, actually, weighing around 13,000 tons and resulted in a wave of molasses about 25 feet high. Yeah, just rushing through the streets at an estimated 60 kilometers an hour. Sadly, killing around 21 people and injuring about 150. Yeah, yikes. The event entered local folklore and residents claimed for decades afterwards that the area still smelled of molasses. Yeah, Boston Brown Sox. How did we miss that? That would've been great. White Sox, Red Sox, Brown Sox, no? It was reported in papers that quote, Everything that a Bostonian touched was sticky, you know? <laughs> hey, this brown goop, yeah, it's wicked sticky. Watch your feet. Number two, brand new bees. Yes, about time. A lot of us know bees is pretty harmless. They're fuzzy little pollinators. Unless, of course, you're allergic. Then in that case, get out of here. Just run. We got you. But bees normally do a lot more good than harm. That was, of course, until an experiment in the 70s went south and created an entirely new crossbred evil bee. Awesome, look out, I guess. This experiment was to take a regular honey bee and then breed it with a bee that's found in Africa that produces way more honey. And then, of course, the goal was to produce a manageable bee that would also provide more honey than a regular honey bee, right? Just better stuff. Well, the bees that came out were a lot less manageable, turns out, and they didn't even make more honey. Just, uh, just an F all the way down. Throw some Fs in the chat, boys. After this experiment ended, however, the bees got out into the environment, and then the 80s saw the beginning of some bee trouble. Yeah, they got out. Heads up, guys. New bees. Imagine that, being like, yeah, the bees got out. Yeah, they're new, we don't know. 
We don't know what they like to do. These bees are not only aggressive towards other kinds of bees, which, okay, relax, world star, that creates a huge problem, but they're also very aggressive towards humans. And when these bees sting you, their stinger stays with them. So they can, you know, keep Julius Caesaring you over and over instead of losing the, losing the shank. Victims of these swarms receive 10 times the amount of stings as a regular swarm. Awesome. And they react to disturbances 10 times as fast, and they'll also chase said disturbance a quarter of a mile. So, hope you got your running shoes on today. These bees have actually caused at least a thousand deaths also. So, yes, keep your heads up. They're definitely deadly. Number one, tree huggers. Gotta end on a nice one, you know what I mean? Just spent some time up north climbing, planting some trees myself this past weekend, but, you know, the great tree. Yeah, can't really climb this one. The great banyan tree is located in Howrah, India. It's huge. Like, Huge, huge, and beautiful. The entire garden is actually one individual tree that spans four acres and is over 80 feet tall, making it one of the natural marvels of the world. Why is this not a UNESCO World Heritage Site by now? It was planted by locals of unknown almost 300 years ago. That's nice. The old Great Banyan tree has roots that cover vast distances. Yeah, just for some numbers here, that's as wide and round as a Walmart. This thing is bigger than a Walmart. The canopy is all connected like the neural highway of a brain, connecting to each other in one giant labyrinth of root and leaf. Of course, the Sherman tree in California that was planted is the largest tree, but the humanity alone of this sacred tree humbles us in how small we are, how connected we could be, and the beauty of what a little bit of patience can do. That's nice. That's really nice. Well, there you have it, folks. 10 bizarre real events in history that sound fake part two. If you want to see a part three, hit that thumbs up, comment down below. Yeah. Send us some mail via a pigeon, whatever you want to do. I'm not going to stop you. Yeah. And until next time, I'm Kyle McWatters. And I'm Taylor McWatters. We'll see you next time on Bumblebee. Bumblebee.